and what about you and in this video here uh, we're gonna I'm gonna I'm going to criticize one of my own videos that I put up uh, a couple of weeks ago it's the first look Delta pressure sensor analysis uh, video and I'm just gonna clarify and well criticize some of the things that I said So if I take a wee listen and a wee reminder to uh, this wee segment here. Response from the pressure pulse sensor. Uh, you'd th people think that it should be, it should be lowest because it's the lowest pulse, but it's, it's because it's, a, it's the difference, it's the highest difference is what you're seeing here. It's the highest difference. And so what you're looking for is an anomaly. So the highest difference in the pulse is the bad cylinder. So, so what I say there is it's the highest difference in the in the pulse is the bad cylinder. Now in this case that is correct and I'm also saying that some people think it should be lower because you'll have a lower pulse. Well it could be also it depends on what way your pulse sensor polarity is. The pulse sensors are polarized. So I've been revisiting this and I've been messing about a wee bit and by simply changing the polarity of the pulse sensor I have now got a waveform that will indeed go down the way so it's probably a matter of a personal choice or personal pre preference so well I'm going to have a wee look at that and just to clarify for people and you can do it whatever you want uh, to suit you this does ring true but it's just that wee bit of the highest difference it isn't necessarily the case Everything else that I say is uh, pretty much correct, I think, uh, because uh, this it doesn't show you an actual uh, pressure. It's no reflection on any actual values. So most of it is, is correct. And the point of the video was the wee uh, waveform overlay there. Uh, so it's just that wee tiny wee bit that I want to clarify. And uh, I'm going to just demonstrate that. So here's our, our pressure pulse sensor and we're going to do that again on the MixSig. But you may notice at the top there I've connected it a wee bit differently. I've connected it with uh, uh, normal banana jacks and that's so that uh, I can change the polarity. So I'm just going to blow it in. This is the way, this, this pressure pulse sensor, this is the way I bought it. This is a bought sensor from Auto Ditex and this is, I haven't modified it at all. So that's me blowing into it three pulses. So if we swap the polarity around here at the top. So I'll put the negative into there. And the positive into there. We'll do that again. So it goes positive with a blow and then the reflection on the negative. So we can see that on, a, on an ordinary voltmeter, it's on full DC, if I blow into it, negative, and then positive. So negative, and then positive. Again, if we sw swap the leads, just swap the polarity around, that's all we're doing. do that again that's a blow positive first and then negative positive first and then negative so it's just the way this sensor is connected and that's why the peak is higher on on our, our trace so I'm going to conduct that we experiment again and I'm just going to show you uh, that it does indeed go the uh, down if if you have a uh, a missing pulse on the exhaust. So here's the car running normally again, and that's with the pulse sensor connected uh, the way it's normally connected, no lead swapped around or anything like that. So I like the, the nice and even uh, wave there, but 
but I've set the, the leads up so that I can just swap the, the polarity here at the picoscope. So I'm just going to do that while you watch the uh, trace there. And that's an actual trace. So you'll see the, the red line is the pulse sensor. The blue is our sink. And that's the pulse sensor connected uh, reverse polarity, as it were, from the way it was manufactured. And you can see a slight difference that they sort of lean over that way a wee bit, I think. But uh, it's pretty much it's pretty much the same. We'll just swap them back uh, to the way that it's manufactured again. And well, there's a big lot of difference, but to me that's a, a trainer sort of chase. So I'm pretty happy with that because I was thinking about. Uh, opening this pole sensor up and, and swapping the wires about inside it but what I'm going to do now I'm going to disconnect injector number 4 the same we did in the last video uh, if you watch the last video you'll know exactly what I'm doing here so uh, I'm not going to run through the whole the whole test and uh, I'm going to do the same just swap the polarity about ok so that's uh, number 4 injector uh, disconnected and I know you may be able to see it very well in this, it's better on the overlay, but that peak is higher than the other, the other three there. So what I'm going to do, and this is with the car, the car's running here, so this is all live and happening. I'm going to change the polarity of the pulse sensor at the picoscope end. And we can see that it's now lower, so if that lowest valley there that's the, the normal sort of that, that that sort of level and then that's that's lower than the other two so you can get it to go the other way if you prefer that if you prefer that so if you imagine uh that's a missing pulse then but again what i said before about it's a difference in the pressure these don't represent any values at all these peaks so it's the difference in the pressure if you want it to show lower on the missing pulse then you, you know you need to check the polarity of whatever way your sensor is, is wired so uh, what I'm going to do now is we're going to have a wee, a wee better look at this uh, sensor on the bench here and just see why it's doing that okay so here is our first look pressure sensor and it's from that company there, autodytax.com. I think this is pretty well built. You know, uh, they're not overly expensive. It's about 60 quid. But as we know, and we've looked at, uh, we know the way these work. Uh, they're pretty simple. I'm going to really show you here now, you know. Uh, you can make one of these, and loads and loads of guys make one of these, especially the guys in the States. And I think I know why the guys in the States make, make these themselves. I'm going to show, this, show you that as well. So this, uh, this one here, it screws off. Uh, it's just threaded. And there we go. So there is the hole that that pulse is taken from. So it's taken from that side. And it's pulsing, it's taking the pulse from the back side of the pizza. So we'll have an O-ring here. And clearly the, the ceiling of this is, is crucial. And there's, there's a, an O-ring that'll capture this face, that face there. And there's an O-ring which will capture onto this face. So there's two seals on that, which is pretty, pretty nifty. So we'll take that smaller O-ring out and put that in the shot for you there so the larger one the smaller one slightly smaller so this is the back of our piezoelectric sensor uh, which we've demonstrated before and here we are here's the magic all happens guys here's our piezoelectric sensor there and very very fine wires there guys so i'll try and get this to focus the best we can on this 
okay? So the middle output from the, the crystal there is with that fine wire is connected to the middle of the BNC. Or what would be uh, the positive of the BNC? Just put a wee bit more light on there. Hopefully, maybe see that a wee bit better. So, that is really how that works. Is another wee ring in there? No, it's not. So I am, I'm just gonna leave this the way it is, and it's sort of like as long as you know uh, what way this is wired and what way it works. If you prefer it the, the other way, you either just swap the leads around or you could take that apart and swap it around uh, yourself. So just without catching the wires, I'm gonna close that back in again, and that just sits in there. So there's no other components uh, at all in there, and we put our smaller ring back in again and the, the the larger one will fit in there it's a nice wee groove so it, it is it's, it's pretty well made and you know that uh, there's a nice clean waveform on the on the good on the known good trace there as as you saw and another wee thing i'll maybe i'll maybe point out is i think it's pretty crucial as well you see the the, the pulse is taken from a very, very small hole there. Uh, a very small hole indeed from the output. It's, a, it's nearly a, a needle. That, that isn't a uh, full bore right through there. So any guys that are making these, uh, there's maybe you know a possible improvement by doing this wee tear down here of a, of a bot sensor. Uh, I bought the pressure pulse sensor. If any of the guys in the states are are watching, and I know a lot of them make their own. And just moving on, I'm going to show you why I think they make their own. And I know a few of the guys in the states watch watch these vids. Have, have made a few comments and stuff, and it's really really good. And we're we're getting across the pond, and uh, we're sharing all our ideas and our and our experiences. Um, yeah, and that's how we're all learning. For sure, uh, yeah. So pressure pulse sensor and that's it. So this is this is a bought one from this auto dye tax company. That's the wee tear down of it. And uh, from our our previous experiments as well with these piezoelectric sensors, um, we can see here. Uh, just got them out of the bag there. We can see here that uh, they're all wired with uh, you know a red lead to the the center of the the crystal itself and the, and the negative is is on the on the brass plate so what my wee sensor is doing is it's taking the pulse from the from the back there and that's why it's it's going negative on on, a, on positive pressure so it's negative voltage on positive pressure that's the way the bot one is is wired this this model anyway I can't vouch for the uh, the AAS wave ones, the, which is slightly different, different style. But uh, <coughs> speaking of AAS wave, we'll just uh, move on to that. So that's the uh, AAS wave uh, first look pressure pulse sensor there, and uh, it's quite pricey now for a piezoelectric uh, crystal that's uh, encapsulated. In a in a piece of uh, a piece of pipework sort of thing. So, yeah, it's uh, I take it that's why a lot of guys in the states make their own. But uh, I've noticed noticed in the United Kingdom, uh, this company uh, Auto Die Tax uh, seems to be changing the the, the distributors that, that I know of. Uh, seems to be uh, changing their their distributors. So there's a lot of this sort of stuff that's has dropped off their websites in the UK. The UK ones that I know of. Uh, there's one in Northern Ireland and a, another guy in uh, England and they seem to be changing so uh, we need to keep an eye on who, who those, those are changing to. Uh, maybe if somebody wants to drop something into the comments of who who is uh, selling these things now but uh, for the guys in the States yes you could uh, certainly buy one of those for a couple of quid 
and uh, make up some sort of wee, wee casing uh, as long as it's sealed and as I said uh, if you buy one of those there uh, uh, it seems to work better if there's a, if there's a very very small aperture so that's I think that's a secret of getting a good a good uh, a good waveform out of it but so anyway I hope that uh, clarifies a few things on this uh, on these purse pearl sensors I think they're very useful uh, as I said in the last video, people are very inventive of uh, what they're actually using them for. You can test blow by, uh, you put up your scope and you can see uh, every firing event and sync it to uh, a spark event as well. So I hope, I hope that video uh, helps find it, find it interesting, uh, clarifies a few things uh, just the way I was explaining it in the first video. And uh, apologies if I, I misled in any way about that. Uh, the way that delta work but it still is a delta it's it's most of what i said is, is correct uh hopefully and anybody has uh any questions or the the know better than me they can explain it better more welcome throw them in the comments and as ever thanks for watching and uh hope this helps somebody and all the best and bye bye